Okay, thank you, Ian. You have been very helpful here. Now it is really too bad that I did not notice that there was a little peg on the bottom of there because in all likelihood when I was prying it forward like this to break it off all I had to do is grab hold of it and just sort of wiggle it a little bit and pull it up sort of like pulling out a tooth not that I've ever done that but it can't be hard as long as it isn't my tooth Yeah, there it is, stuck in the hole, square peg. Let's just try a dry run here first before we actually put the glue on something. We won't worry about where the lines go right now. We'll get them straightened out later. But we want to try and put it right back there. I think that if I was to hold it the way I am right now, maybe put a little bit of CA medium against that post a post, I mean the mast, and maybe a little bit on that, you know, square part that broke off. And then uh, I think that'll probably be good enough. I realize it may not look quite perfectly straight there in the viewfinder, but I'm looking straight down the mast right now, and it, it's pretty straight. A lot straighter than it looks there. I think that pipe on the right is what throws it and makes it look like it's crooked. Okay, this is our shorter line. So that'll be T. This is our longer line that we'll deal with later. Now this shorter one, it goes up to and attaches on to this one right here that I just hooked on to. And um, I don't want to have a tight. And as near as I can tell, it goes about midpoint between here and where it fastens up here. So we'll try and Fasten it right about there. Now how do I hold that so it's just about the right tension so that when it let when I let go it doesn't pull this line down too far. It doesn't take very much at all to keep this line straight. Like do I have it hooked over like this and maybe put a tiny bit of uh, maybe it should go over both of these because I, I don't want it to uh, come on get off of there I don't want it to come come down and around and uh, 
around this line and then there's a big glob of glue there I just want just hardly anything I want it to sort of look like maybe it's just a little connection I was going to say an insulator but that it wouldn't be an insulator if there was a, you know if it was supposed to connect anyway it doesn't really matter at a distance we're not going to see it I know that um, I wonder if maybe I should be having this go up and over one of the other lines like this and, and put a little bit of uh, a blue tack on the end of this just a tiny little bit just to give it just a little bit of yeah I'm going to do that I can put a little piece of blue tack on the end of that okay now this is the line here that we want to fasten on to so we got to go past that and up and over this far one here and let go now how can I assure that what this is going to be just right now uh, I'm going to gamble if I pull this down just a little bit that if I was to glue it right there when we nip that off there would be just enough tension to keep this straight Okay, I've readjusted things just very, very slightly here. What I did was I took this line right here and I pulled it down just a little bit, a little bit more to in, to ensure that it's going to keep this one taut. Obviously, there's no CA glue on my applicator. So I'm going to now use a little bit, put a little bit of CA medium on and just touch it at the X there. I'll put the macro lens on again. Okay, X marks the spot. Just touch it. I believe I got it. You could probably see it better than I could. Now there's three different things that we can try and cut this with. This is that special razor blade that we made up. Um, my fear is that as I'm cutting, I'm going to end up going down into th this line here. And uh, then, of course, uh, it set us back probably a day. No, I could use the. Uh, where is that other thing? I could sharpen this and use this and put something in behind and then just press. Um, that might be the safest, but what can I get in behind here? Like I can't get my plexiglass in behind here. That does appear to have uh, glued okay. That you know, for a while there, I was wondering did I actually even touch it, but I obviously I did. I am a hunt and peck typer. In other words, I can't type. I can't text back and forth with people in a conversational way. I can get by. I'm guessing I do 10-15 words a minute. Just enough that in an emergency I can fill out a form or something like that. <laughs> anyway, when I look into my computer monitor, just above my computer monitor is my surveillance monitor. And even though I may be looking at the computer monitor to make sure I've got the letters in the right place, if there's any movement in the surveillance monitor, it catches my eye. I'm not sitting here watching to see what the neighbors are doing, but any movement will catch my eye, even a rabbit hopping by. And, uh, yeah, and a few minutes ago, I noticed my neighbor coming down the street carrying a blue box. Now, that's a recycle bin. And uh, I'm wondering, what's he got now? And he turns into my driveway, and I meet him at the door, and uh, turns out it's a box of cabbage. I didn't know there was such a thing as winter cabbage. Apparently this was grown last year, and if stored properly, it lasts all winter. But it's pretty well had it now, I guess, and he thought my rabbits might like it. Now, we're going to just see. Do the rabbits like cabbage better than carrots? Well, let's see which one disappears first. I'll let you know tomorrow. 
Winter cabbage. Never heard of it before. Always learning something new. On the other hand, maybe I did know it before and I've forgotten. Maybe I'm getting like that goldfish that just goes round and round in its bowl. Every pass, it's all new again. Okay, our short line is attached here onto this one right here. And the long line comes up and feeds through all this stuff somehow. And it attaches to this line right here at about the midpoint right where I'm touching. Uh, in order to have everything hanging in its natural position, I think the thing to do right now is to cut this this one right, right now. And that way it's going to be forward or backwards where it's going to go because when, when I run this one up, naturally I don't want it chafing against any other line. So, uh, yeah, let's get the ship turned around maybe because if you will recall, this, this short line that we ran up, it is actually attached to this side of this line. So I think it would be easier to cut it from the other side if I'm going to be cutting it the way I had, I'm thinking I'm going to. So what I'm going to have to do is turn the ship around and put something up against this so that when I cut from the other direction I can push because because there is CA glue right there it's going to be hard to cut so in other words our specialty little razor blade cutter isn't going to want to cut very good it's not like it's just cutting into rubber it's actually cutting into uh, CA glue impregnated rubber and it's going to be real hard in other words uh, I'm doing a lot of talking here because I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Well, here we go again with the old saying that necessity is the mother of invention. And here's my invention. All we got is a stick. On the end of it, I've reinforced it with CA thin to make it hard so that when I push the cutter up against it, it's not going to sink into the wood. And right here, you can't see it, I'll move you in a little bit. I have you, I have you backed off so that you can see what's going on here. Um, yeah, well, I'll move you in and then you can see. Now, this is the line here that we want to cut off. We want to cut it off just above this line right here. And in other words, right at that X. So my thinking is, and this is actually the first time I've tried it, I have to carefully bring this up so that our X is going to be pressed against, if possible. Let me adjust our easy line. Now, because this is stretchy, I don't need to worry too much about breaking it. Now, we're going to want to cut right, right there. Let's get a little closer, a little closer. Now, this is almost right up against that. I if I... Just go a little bit closer yet. And once again, remember, this this stuff will not break. It's not like we're working with thread here. This It has a, a stretch ratio of something like, what, what, what was it, 7 to 1? Okay, there. As near as I can tell, this is right up against our uh, CA thin, which is long since hardened. Um, I'll put the macro lens on and we'll, we'll just move right in. Maybe I'll try the super macro. It might work in a case like this. Now it has taken me about half an hour to set up for this shot. And I have re-honed my cutter here so it's razor sharp. Unfortunately, I'm finding I can't get in here to my lights and everything are in the way. I'm going to have to reposition. Okay, now I want to cut just above this line here. I 
have sharpened and honed this. I think I may have said that. Got to get it just right. Okay, let's see what's going to happen now. Well, I think we're okay. It's a little bit on the slack side, isn't it? Well, this might, this might tighten up a bit here. Yeah, it seems to be slowly going back to its normal position, so that's all right. All right, now our long one. And it has to come up. Okay, when we want it to hook into Okay. Now is it chafing against anything it's not supposed to here? Yeah, it, it appears to be rubbing against this one right here. So it's obviously going to have to go on the other side of that. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and string it, because I'm pretty sure you don't want to be watching this. So why am I making you watch it, right? Oh, wrong side. Oh. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Now I've got a bit of a disaster here. I accidentally got a knot in our line. And I'm, it's a good thing I noticed it before I pulled this thing tight. I think it, if I take a couple of pins here and I'm going to try and pull it apart. Maybe trying to do it on camera is not a good idea. I think it's coming. I think it's coming. Yes. Oh, sigh of relief. Okay, I've got it threaded correctly here now. And I know it's going to be it's going to be pulling this line down too much because this piece of blue tack is too heavy, so I'm gonna to have to only have about a third that much. And you notice how it's it's twisting our double antenna. Um, I don't think it needs to be very tight. But at least it's, it doesn't seem to be chafing either this one here or this one here. Um, yeah, we're kind of running out of time here this afternoon. I'm going to cut today's video off. And uh, thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow.